and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll be covering fungal infections of the oral mucosa and how to manage. Fungal infections of the mouth are usually caused by candida. It's worth knowing that between 40 to 70 percent of the population harbour candida as a commensal organism. It acts as an opportunistic pathogen and in immunocompromised patients systemic candidiasis can have a high mortality rate. So what factors can predispose patients to oral candidosis? We have local factors and systemic factors. Patients who wear their dentures at night are at risk of oral candidosis. Patients with dry mouth, so this could be drug related or due to a medical condition, can also be predisposed to oral candidosis. Steroid therapy, especially inhaled steroids, and high carbohydrate diets can put you at risk. Systemic factors that can put patients at risk include immunocompromised patients, patients with diabetes, age extremes, so newborn infants and elderly individuals, antibiotic therapy, and haematinic deficiencies such as anemia. There are four main types of oral candidosis. Number one, acute pseudomembranous candidosis also known as thrush. Number two, acute erythematous candidosis, also known as antibiotic sore mouth. Number three, chronic erythematous candidosis, also known as denture stomatitis. And finally, number four, chronic hyperplastic candidosis, also known as candidal leukoplakia. Let's start with pseudomembranous candidosis, i.e. oral thrush. So this is where you will see soft, creamy, yellow patches that can be wiped off to reveal an underlying erythematous mucosa. It's frequently found on the soft palate with steroid inhaler use, but can be seen at any oral site. In terms of management, as the dentist, you need to identify and correct any local or systemic risk factors. Are they rinsing their mouth out with water after they use steroid inhalers? Do they have diabetes? Do they have anemia? Do they have a suppressed immune system? Systemic antifungals such as fluconazole or itraconazole can be used as a treatment. With acute erythematous candidosis, you will see erythematous areas that are painful, typically on the dorsum of the tongue. The underlying cause is usually local, such as antibiotic use or the use of a steroid inhaler. Therefore, after correction of the local factors, the candidosis may resolve. You can also consider the use of a systemic antifungal agent such as fluconazole. Next we have chronic erythematous candidosis, also known as denture stomatitis. You will notice erythematous areas on denture bearing surfaces typically under an upper acrylic denture, with margins corresponding to the periphery of the appliance worn. It is usually not painful and typically due to poor denture hygiene. The main principle of management with this infection is ensuring adequate denture hygiene. Daily mechanical cleaning of dentures is essential. In addition, the patient should be advised to place the dentures, if made in acrylic, in a dilute solution of hypochlorite overnight for three weeks. Patients who have a denture with metal components, such as cobalt chrome or steel clasps, should soak the denture in a 0.2% chlorhexidine solution because placement of metal in hypochlorite will cause tarnishing. This infection can also be treated with topical antifungals such as nystatin or meconazole applied onto the fit surface of the patient's denture to speed up resolution. Chronic hyperplastic candidiasis is a relatively rare form of oral candidosis and carries an increased risk of malignancy, so biopsy is essential. This type of candidiasis may be associated with varying degrees of dysplasia, with oral cancer present in a high proportion of cases. You will see white, adherent plaques that can be nodular or speckled. It typically presents in the bilateral commissure regions and dorsum of tongue. In contrast to pseudomembranous candidosis, the white plaques do not rub off. 
Chronic hyperplastic candidiasis is treated with systemic antifungals such as fluconazole and smoking cessation. It is also important to be aware of candida associated lesions. Examples of this include angular chylitis and median rhomboid glossitis. Angular chylitis is characterised by soreness, erythema and fissuring at the angles of the mouth. It is commonly associated with denture stomatitis but may represent a nutritional deficiency or it may be related to orofacial granulomatosis or HIV infection. Both yeasts, so candida, and bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus and beta hemolytic streptococci, are commonly involved as interacting infective factors. While the underlying cause is being identified and treated, it is often helpful to apply meconazole cream, which is active against both candida and gram-positive cocci. Median rhombide glossitis characteristically presents as a smooth, well-demarcated area of erythema at the junction of the anterior two-thirds and posterior one-third of the tongue. A similar erythematous patch, the so-called kissing lesion, can sometimes be seen on the adjacent hard palate. It is typically asymptomatic, or patients may complain of mild soreness. It is associated with smoking and inhaler use. Treatment consists of systemic antifungal agents such as fluconazole and itraconazole.